Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Friends Talking Nerdy. This is Tim Jasmine, and joining me, I have the greatest legal mind of the Pacific Northwest. It is Professor Aubrey. Hi everybody. We are here a few days away from Christmas. Oh my gosh, it's almost time for Christmas. The holidays and all that, yeah. And um, while we will uh, have a show on Christmas Day uh, reviewing uh, the Big Mouth Christmas special, I did want to take some time to uh, talk with the professor about Christmas as well. That's right. So, um, have you written your letter to Santa this year? No, I've, I, you know, much like when I found out pro wrestling was indeed staged. <laughs> so, um, are you telling me that you don't think Santa is real? No. Okay. And what do you base that on? Facts. <laughs> Did you ever think Santa was real? No. Okay, so you never even had, like... Uh, awakening or a you know disappointing discovery nothing like that I mean um, I I think my mother just knew that you know with the money she was making she was never going to be able to um, compete and that the Santa thing was bullshit because you know I mean the whole myth is that you know if you're good you'll get all the toys you want blah 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 and if you're poor no you're not you know, you're not going to get that Nintendo you want. And so she was just very upfront and honest, like, I buy it. And um, that doesn't mean we didn't go to, like, Santa's in the mall and get our picture taken and all that. But it was just a stupid picture. I didn't care. Hmm. I always believed in Santa and still kind of do. Because Christmas at my house was magical. Mm. And it is definitely my favorite holiday. And, um, it used to, my parents went all out for Christmas. I think they grew up poor and so they were like, we can do this. So we're going to do this. And they would, when we were smaller, we always got the exact same things Mm -hmm. because that was the fair way. Like my mom didn't want any competition between the Santa and so she was always very careful, um, you know, I found out later to write down everything she bought and make sure that she spent exactly the same amount of money on each child. And um, so, and they would stay up all night on Christmas Eve and put all the stuff together. And so there'd be like presents that were wrapped under the tree that were like from me to you. But um, Santa would come on Christmas Eve night and put all of the, I mean, all, there was so much. There was just, it was like a sparkling treasure mountain. Like, that's how I remember it. Just totally excessive. And I loved every, every minute of it. Then you would love my aunt. Um, I mean, I brought it up on the show and I brought it up to you before, too. I mean, she's the one uh, growing up that was uh, the one that had the Christmas parties at her house. And she ultimately moved to a town in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, Christmas, Michigan, and opens and uh, runs Santa's workshop. Wow. She loved Christmas that much. Yeah. Just, yeah. And... I, I I don't know. I've always been the cynical type. I've never been the you know. I, you're not going to get me caroling. You're not going to get me, you know, d- d- wearing stupid Christmas sweaters or anything like that. I'm too damn cynical. That's really sad to me. <laughs> Why do you say that? Well, I you know, I don't think I've ever um, been involved with someone. That actually liked Christmas. Hmm. And I wonder what that would be like. I mean, there are elements I like about it. I mean, I'm not one of... Okay, so what do you like like about Christmas? The, The To me, the best times I remember are the ones where, like, you wake up on Christmas Day and, like, you exchange a few gifts, but it's just a day you spend with people you love. Mm hmm. Maybe there are like a special couple of people around who aren't usually around, that kind of thing. Something like that. And I mean, nothing too big. You don't want, you know, like third ants coming in all the way from Missouri or something like that. Right. Yeah, no, it was definitely a family time for me as well. And we did 
we would go to my father's parents' house for a Christmas Eve party, and then we would go to my mother's parents' house for a Christmas morning party. Mm-hmm. And so it was like a pretty much a 24-hour party, and you got to see all the cousins and the aunts and uncles, and, um, you know, it was, it was a good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, th- th- like as a kid, you know, we would go to my aunt's uh, for Christmas, but then, you know, once I became an adult, I didn't uh, really celebrate Christmas much at all for at least the past 20 years, man. Right. Well, we're celebrating Christmas this year. Damn right. <laughs> and um it should be fun. So we're going to play some trivia pers- trivial pursuits going to hang out with my family should be a good time indeed now do you have any other traditions do you have like a movie you like to watch every t- every year this time of year is there like music you need to listen to yes so um some of my favorite christmas movies are um the muppet christmas carol uh Elf, which I know you don't like. Um, There is a show called Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas, which was produced by Jim Henson and features um, Kermit as the narrator. But it's a story about um, some otters, some river otters. And it's a little bit of a Gift of the Magi story where... Um, you know, the son takes the wash tub to make a wash tub base to enter a talent contest, and the mother takes the tool chest and hawks it to buy fabric to make a dress to sing in the talent contest. So they both enter the co- talent contest so they can buy each other a gift, and they they both lose. So they don't get any money, but then they walk down the river and start singing a song because they just love singing. And um, the mayor toad dude hears them, and he owns the Riverside Rest, and so he gives them a job singing in the restaurant. And so then they are no longer destitute. And so it's a happy ending. Um, so that's probably my favorite Christmas show to watch. I love Charlie Brown. Um, what else? What else do I watch? That's probably... Oh, no, the other one is A Christmas Story I really enjoy. Yeah. Uh, I love It's a Wonderful Life. Classic. Um, I'll watch them all, though. I'll watch all the Christmas movies, really. Yeah, I mean, the ones I'll gravitate to are, and I'll talk about it a little more in depth uh, um, this uh, Saturday on our Christmas episode, but South Park. Mm, you know, great Christmas episodes on South Park. Yes, I mean, dark humor appeals to the cynic in me, I guess, but at the end of the day, still very much embracing the Christmas spirit, you know? Um, I mean, it it seems laughable that, you know, like a talking shit uh, is associated with Christmas, but they got away with it. They really did, and everybody loves Mr. Hanky. Mm-hmm. Yes. Howdy ho! <laughs> and the Woodland Critters, oh my goodness. The woodland critters are a little much for me. <laughs> They're a little much for me. Uh, that that episode, as well as Scott Tennerman Must Die, really they build to just one joke. But if you can laugh at that one joke, the rest of the episode is, is going to be good. And, it, and in that one joke in the woodland critters is when uh, they reveal that, you know, they're Satan. You know, Satan. Mm-hmm. You know, hail Satan. What? Mm-hmm. And then at that point, you're just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> And then the end too, you know, um, you know where you find out it's a story Cartman's telling in school, and uh, Kyle gets upset uh, because he thinks Cartman's going to do something uh, to him in the story, and Cartman assures him he's not. And then, um, you know, the, and then he ends the story by going, "And they all lived happily ever after, except for Kyle, who died of AIDS two weeks later." <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. And as far as the music, the Mr. Hankey Christmas Classics album is is required listening on Christmas, I think. I agree. I used to have it on, uh, I used to have Mr. Hankey's Christmas Classics on DVD. Mm-hmm. 
and would watch it every Christmas for sure. Yep. Any other Christmas memories in Tennessee? Well, Tennessee was, you know, a real fun place for Christmas. Everybody celebrated Christmas, and um, many times we would cut our own tree until we got an artificial tree because my mother got sick of dealing with the tree. And um, my dad would always try to get a free tree, so he'd always just try to, like, spy one and go cut it down like, on whoever's property or find a really ugly tree on our property and, like, make us have it as a Christmas tree because it was <laughs> from our property. Um, you know... Yeah, I mean, I can't, can't really think of any uh, particular Christmases that involved that. But well, I, uh, one thing I can ask then, um, since you've lived in a couple of states, are there any regional Christmas things that happened uh, in Tennessee that that don't happen here that you miss? Oh, for sure. Um, there, I would always watch the Christmas parade. Um, I was in the band in high school, and we would always march in the Christmas parade. Mm-hmm. Before that, I was a baton twirler, a majorette, <laughs> and so I would perform in the Christmas parade. And um, so I love a parade. I love bands, high school marching bands. So um, that was always fun, and. Um, we would always make Christmas candy, so there was one whole day where we would do nothing but make Christmas candy, and when my grandmother was well enough, she would, it was me and my mom and my grandmother would do it together, and it was sort of the day that we spent together every year, just the three of us, because my sister was usually around, Mm -hmm. Um, but Jennifer was not into Christmas baking or candy making, and she was a ballerina and was in the Nutcracker every Christmas. And so she basically didn't have any time around Christmas to do stuff like spend a day baking, but and if uh you remember back in our show's archives, you know, we we learned um how good of a baker you are compared to her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did way back on show number 170 or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so lots of baking around Christmas, and uh, my grandmother, sorry, my great-grandmother was kind of really well-known in the small town that she lived in as someone who could make really good candy, and she made this stuff called cream candy that tastes sort of like a buttermint or like a melt-away, mm. uh, really tasty, and then um, this peanut butter candy that I made one year I don't it wasn't last year I don't think but um it's like a divinity kind of candy it's just like a cloud of sugar with peanut butter and then rolled up and cut into slices really really good sounds like it um and we used to make that every year in Tennessee and you had to have a sunny day a bright cold sunny day and that was like the you were supposed to make it on a day like that so it would turn out. Mm-hmm. There's never a bright, cold, sunny day in Portland in December. Um, but there were quite a few. I guess it was two years ago, and so my mom and I made it for the first time probably in 10 years, two years ago, and it was so good, and I can't wait until there's a bright, cold day in December again. Yeah, you'd be hopping in the car, driving away. <laughs> Mother, I'm coming. I'm coming to make candy. <laughs> yes, we'll be. You'll, you would be going from the new place. That's right. I'll be going from the new place. That's right. That's right. But um, yeah, for me, again, like I said, I didn't really celebrate Christmas that much. I mean, the you know, apart from my aunt's place, but I didn't you know do stuff like Christmas parades or anything like that. Um, I was in a parade once. Were you? What yeah. Um, it was 12th grade. There was, no, 12th or 11th grade. There was, um, it was a drama class I took. They, um, it was at the beginning of the other celebration on the Grand Prix. They um, auditioned for like extras and I uh, got to dress up as like a squire or something like that and got to ride in a limo too. Oh, wow. Fancy. Yeah. The only time I ever had a limo. 
to date. To date. <laughs> I've never been in a limo. Mm. Yeah, um, misanthropic le- recluse one. <laughs> High price attorney, nothing. <laughs> but um, I am not a high priced attorney. <laughs> you are just so full of shit sometimes. No, it's, uh, it's uh, all my years of being a wrestling fan. You know, it's like you take a, a little grain of truth and then you elaborate it. Right. You know, I mean, it's yeah. <laughs> But what you said about yourself was totally true. And what did I say about myself? You're a mis- misanthropic re- recluse. Well, that is true, yes. But that's <laughs> also a little on the hyperbolic side, you know. I mean, it l- probably looked good on a t-shirt, you know. Yeah. But, um... With your face on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um... Because of the holidays, we obviously want to be able to spend as much time, you know, celebrating them. So we wanted to do a little abbreviated, uh, uh, abbreviated recording for you folks today because we have another recording from the Grand Ole Opry. That is right. This is a Christmas episode. Yes, from 1955, um, a December, it, yeah, it was uh, originally uh, played on a Christmas Eve in 1955, and yeah, they're gonna just play some Christmas music and um, just... Have a Christmas hoedown. Yeah, like Mini Pearl, I think, is in the episode, they said. Oh, I'm sure. Yep, so... It wouldn't be Christmas without Mini Pearl. Yeah, howdy. <laughs> howdy. Oh, man. But um, but yeah, we wanted to be able to play that for you, folks, so you have uh, something entertaining. Because I, 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 like last year on Christmas, I played the radio version of "It's a Wonderful Life." Oh, right, fun. Yeah, and it, that was especially fun because Jimmy Stewart was George Bailey, but um, Clarence was played by Al, um, uh, Alfred, uh, what's his name, Arthur Q. Bryan, the voice of Elmer Fudd. No. Oh. Mm. That's Every time a bell wings, an angel gets its wings. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. So, um, but, so yeah, well, what we thought we would do is uh, cut it to the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, Tennessee, to celebrate Christmas in 1955. December 24th, 1955. What a good, good day it was. Mm-hmm. Is there a possibility any members of your family may have listened? Absolutely. So my parents would have both been five, and they were the oldest siblings in their families, but they both would have had younger siblings by then. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure that both sets of my grandparents listened to the Grand Old Opera in the 50s. I'm, I'm positive, but I will definitely ask them. Yeah, I mean, one thing I've I've kind of marveled at is that even the recordings uh, from the '30s uh, that they have uh, that they had in the file that I downloaded have some really good audio quality. They do, and the performances were really good. Yeah, like uh, the first one uh, we we <laughs> pulled out of the hat with uh, Johnny Cash's debut at the Opry. I mean, th- th- also being that that is the same day that uh, he met his second wife, June Carter. Um, I mean, th- th- that's a historic day. So being able to play that on the show here was very cool. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. So let's go to the Ryman Auditorium. What do you think? Let's go to the Ryman. I bet it's decorated real pretty with some pine garlands and some sparkles and some lights. Yes. Pretend you're drinking a mint julep and (laughs) watch and listen to the Grand Ole Opry. From the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, Tennessee, the country music capital of the world, it's Christmas Eve at the Grand Ole Opry. And here's our star, George Morgan. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer Used to laugh and call him names They wouldn't let poor Rudolph Join in any reindeer games Then one foggy Christmas Eve Santa came to say Rudolph, with your nose so bright Won't you guide my sleigh tonight 
Then all the reindeer loved him as they shouted out with glee. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, he'll go down in history. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then all the reindeer loved him as they shouted out with glee. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you go down in history. There it is, yes sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, and season's greetings to all our friends and neighbors of the Grand Ole Opry. Say, Grant, tell the folks who's at our Christmas party tonight. I sure will, George, because there's some fine singing and fun in store for the folks. Thanks to Rod Brassfield, Minnie Pearl, Grandpa Jones, Del Wood, the Anita Kerr Singers, and the Empire Opry Gang. And as our special Christmas Eve guest, the nation's number one country spiritual singer, Miss Martha Carson. Yes, sir. We'll have the Opry gang to do some Christmas songs for you in just a little bit. But first thing we got to do is make room for a fellow who really gets a big kick out of Christmas. And we get a big kick out of him, too, because his name is Rod Brasfield. And here he comes. Howdy, Mr. George Morgan. Hi, Rod. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Good to see you, old buddy, old Thank buddy. You. You know what I'm going to do tonight, George? What are you going to do? I'm going to get me a job being Santa Claus some more if I can find somebody who wants somebody to be Santa Claus some more. <laughs> you want to be Santa Claus? Yeah, I want to make people happy and things. Well, Rod, maybe I can help you. But, uh -huh. uh, but first, I'll have to ask you some questions to what? see if you can qualify. Well, I can qualify, all right, I guess. All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, first, uh, born? Yeah, yeah, I was born. No. You think I was hatched? <laughs> I didn't, that ain't what I meant. All right, tell me, where were you born? Where? Yeah. Uh, upstairs in the front room. Good night, Roddy. Now, listen, be sensible a minute. What date? What date? Yeah. 1492 A.D. 1492 A.D.? Yeah. What's the A.D. for? After dark. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, I, I mean, uh, I, I, I've got to have serious answers, Rod. Yeah. Now, listen. What is your nationality? Oh, I'm a, I'm a Baptist. No, that's your religion. I mean, your nationality. You see, Rod, uh, wherever you're born, that's what you are. Yeah? Yeah. Wherever now, you're born, that's what you are. That's right. It always works that way. You see, if you were born in France, you're a Frenchman. Yeah. If you're born in Germany, you're a German. Yeah. If you're born in America, you're an American. Won't always work that way, Georgie. Oh, it does. Oh, no, it don't. What do you mean? My net, if kittens is born in an oven, they wouldn't be biscuit. Oh. Uh. And furthermore, I was born in bed, and I ain't no bed bug. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, listen, silly. Listen to me. Listen to me. I, I don't think you'd make a good Santa Claus. Well, come, come think of it, I don't think so neither. No, you're too dumb. Yeah, I'm just plumb stupid. Yeah, you're silly. Well, that's the trouble yeah. with me. I'm just, Huh? I'm now, you shut to... up. That makes me mad. You stand there and call me stupid. All right, listen. I ain't near stupid as Grandpa was. How stupid was he? Way over like that. Oh. <laughs> that proves the point. Now, look, I'm, I'm going to ask you one little simple question. Yeah, well, I'm... To show to you how dumb you really are. Yeah. Now, yeah. listen well, close. You ready? Smarty. If an elephant weighs 2,000 pounds, how much does a monkey weigh? <laughs> I'll declare, George, I just don't know. How much do he weigh? Well, I don't know either. Here's a penny. Go weigh yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll go weigh myself. I got a penny. I'll go weigh myself. I'll be right back soon. I can find some. Hey, wait a minute here. That guy makes me so mad I could eat a Christmas burger. Yeah. With mustard on it. Well, now, Rod, don't I ain't get... have nothing to do with now, you. Now, Rod, don't get mad no. about it. Look, oh. listen. Listen, let me tell you something. You can pull it on somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <I'm> going. <laughs> if a monkey with some Yeah, get on with Jimmy Self. Yeah, get Jimmy Self. Hey, Jimmy. Right. Hey, right. Jimmy. Come here, Jimmy. I'm going to tell you. I'm going <laughs> to... Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you. <laughs> if a... If, uh, Jimmy, if a... Ele if a... Uh, weighs 2,420 pounds... How much do a monkey weigh? 
Rod, I don't know. How much does he weigh? I don't know neither. Give me a penny and I'll go weigh myself. Hey, <laughs> wait a minute. That ain't the way it was. I ain't... I'm mad now. George, I'm going to go right now. I'm going, I'm going to go right I'll now. Go, right. Yeah, but before I go, can I say a little piece of poetry? Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, it's it. Christmas, and I, I, I wrote it myself. All right. All right. Is my hair parted? Yeah. <laughs> Here's to all you happy people all over the nation who've been tuning us in and listening to our station. But here's what I'd like to say to each and every one of you. A very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, too. Thank you. Friends, Christmas is indeed the happiest of seasons, a time when family and friends flock together to share in the wonderful holiday spirit. And this spirit is everywhere. You see it in the smiling faces of Christmas shoppers, in the friendly greetings exchanged by one another. You hear it in the joyous voices of Christmas carolers, in the laughter of children. You feel it in the glow of holiday hearts, radiating their own cheery rays of warmth and friendliness. Yes, above all seasons, Christmas is a time of goodwill. The makers of Prince Albert smoking tobacco hope that this holiday season finds you and your family enjoying peace and happiness. Here on Christmas Eve, we would like to extend our best wishes for the merriest of Christmases and for a new year that is filled with all your wishes come true. With these greetings, too, go our hopes that our country may continue to enjoy the peace and prosperity which means so much to all of us. You know, folks, when you get to be the favorite of the entire nation, well, there's not much needed in the way of introduction. All you have to say is, folks, here is Martha Carson. Thank you, George. Martha, listen, congratulations on your 1955 awards and welcome to the Opry on Christmas Eve. Thank you very much, George. Did, did you bring along a few uh, Christmas gifts for the folks? Yes, I did. I brought along uh, a couple that... Uh, tonight, George, that I hope the folks will enjoy. Oh, I know they will. How about a little uh, sleigh bell atmosphere and some fine vocal help from the Anita Kerr singers and you doing Christmas time is here? Well, that's just what we had all planned. Fine. Santa and his reindeer Busy all the year Making toys for girls and boys Spreading Christmas cheer Oh, Christmas time is here Oh Jingle, jangle, jingle bells, Santa's on his way. All his reindeer laugh with glee just for Christmas Day. Bringing every girl and boy loads of Christmas cheer. I bet old Santa Claus is glad Christmas time is here. Oh, Christmas time is here. Jingle, jangle, tinsel, tangle, lighting up the tree. Reindeer prancing, children dancing, hearts so light and free. time of year, and they do it with songs and dances. Like right now, the Opry Gang is cutting the caper to Mississippi Sawyer, so Lou Childry, come in here and call it. Yes, Swing. Little ladies step out of the 
step in grab your horn and go on again. You swing low and I swing forward and swing that gal from Mark. Hey, look at the lady going to the judge, cat there, holding you go with a red horse. Everybody swing. I'll grab your gown, circulate, and take all the way home. I'll wonderful songs that we enjoy at this time of year. Few of them can compare with the ageless traditional songs all of us have known all our lives. This is one such song. Oh, Thank you, folks. Thanks a whole lot. Well, here comes a friend of yours with something mighty important on his mind. Say, George, I did something I shouldn't have done. Oh, what's that, Grant? <laughs> well, this morning I found out I was almost out of Prince Albert, so I peeked in the closet to see if I was going to get some for Christmas. Well, sure enough, I am. And that's good, because I don't ever like to get caught without P.A. Oh, I feel the same way, Grantland. I get a lot of enjoyment from Prince Albert's natural tobacco taste. Yes, sir, P.A. in an O.C.B. paper makes a making smoke. Well, it's just naturally best. Well, that goes for pipe smoking, too. Prince Albert always gives you a cool, comfortable smoke. P.A.'s special process holds and heightens the natural flavor of choice tobacco. And P.A. is taste-tested and approved by more smokers than any other smoking tobacco. So get... Prince Albert smoking tobacco. Nature in her own sure way put the flavor in PA. Try Prince Albert, you'll agree it's tobacco as nature meant tobacco to be. You know, one of our favorite Yuletide songs goes, Here Comes Santa Claus, and by golly, here comes Del Wood to the piano to play it for us. Miss Del Wood, let's make a welcome here.
Michelle would. Thank you. Well, you know, there's no stopping our gal Saturday on a night like this. So let's say hello to the gal who's going to hang up a man-sized Christmas stocking in high hopes that Santa will bring her a man. Cousin Minnie Pearl! Yeah, <laughs> so proud to be here I ever could. <laughs> George, you know what I'd like to find in my Christmas stocking? What's that? You. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I was just fooling, George. I didn't mean that. Uh, I, I tell you, now, though, I, I've known you so long, and I, I'm just glad that you're on our Christmas show tonight because I get a chance to thank you for them lovely handkerchiefs you give me for Christmas. Oh, Minnie, they weren't nothing. Oh, yes, they was. They was the prettiest handkerchiefs I ever seen. In fact, they were so pretty, I, I don't know whether I can afford to use them or not. Oh, wait a minute, Minnie. They only cost a dollar apiece. Well, that's too much money to blow in. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I thought you'd like that yeah. one, George. <laughs> no, I tell you, George, you see what I've got up here on my hat? Oh, a piece of mistletoe. Mistletoe it is. Oh, yes, sir. Wow. I guess I was really taking a big chance. A young, beautiful, innocent girl like me putting mistletoe on her head. Yeah. I guess I was taking a pretty good chance, a big <laughs> chance. But I don't reckon none of these fellas down here will give me any trouble. Oh, now, Minnie, you know the boys here are all crazy about you. Well, if they're crazy about me, why is it ain't none of them ever tried to kiss me? Well, I guess they're not quite that crazy. Either. Oh, huh. <laughs> George, that's not nice to say oh. a thing like me. You reckon maybe they've heard about my brother? Oh, no, no, but I don't think they'd want to kiss him either. No, that's not what I'm talking about, George. You see, I can remember when I was a young girl, you know, and my brother, he, he got him a big shotgun, and he said that he was going to shoot the first feller that ever tried to kiss me. So what happened? Me and the gun got rusty together. <laughs> now, I Minnie, tell you that's sad. Minnie, did you say you could remember when you were a young girl? Yes, I can. What a memory. What a memory. Yeah. Why, George. Look, I now don't to... worry about it, Minnie. Don't worry about the kissing. See, as a matter of fact, you're, you're probably better off. See, don't you realize that when you kiss, germs are transferred from one person to another? Germs? Yeah. You mean if I kiss my feller Hezzy, I'm liable to get a germ? Yes, it's very possible. Oh! Do you know of any more enjoyable way to meet a germ? Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> I tell you, George, let me tell you something. Before I go tonight, I want to say a special Merry Christmas to everybody, everywhere. And I've got a little something here I'd like to read. And it's just a kind of a secret between me and old Santa Claus, see? Yeah. And it goes like this. Merry Christmas, everybody. That goes for Mammy, too. She's a mighty lonely lady, so there's one thing I wish you'd do. Before the season's over and before it starts to thaw, just bring my dear old Mammy a nice big son-in-law. Hey! <laughs> All right. Well, right now, I, I think I'm in a mood for some more fine Martha Carson singing. How you folks like to hear Martha one more time? Yeah. Martha, it's all yours. Thank you very much, George, and thank you, neighbors. First of all, uh, may I kindly especially sing this next one for all the DJs all over the country who were kind enough to vote me uh, number one spiritual <laughs> singer of 1955. You made me really happy, and it was a wonderful Christmas present for me to get the news. For our next song, it's one that takes us back to our very first Christmas, and one we hope you'll enjoy. Peace on earth at Christmas time. Peace on earth at Christmas time. Oh, now, first Christmas, a Christ child was born.
Christmas has all kinds of music for all kinds of folks, young and old. And here's one old-timer we wanted to have at our Opry get-together tonight. Grandpa Jones with Ramona and Chet Atkins and their Christmas cowbells doing jingle bells. Let's welcome them here tonight. If you had to pick the one beautiful Christmas song that best captures the holiness and the spirit of this weekend, I think you'd select this next one. The Anita Kerr singers are going to help me on it, and if you'd like, why, you just sing along too. You 
know, folks, we really hope that you enjoyed your Christmas visit to the Grand Ole Opry. By the way, next week, Marty Robbins will be up in the driver's seat of the old buckboard. And along with his guest, the Carlisles, he'll be coming by to pick you up in time for an Opry New Year's Eve celebration. For now, this is George Morgan saying thanks for everything. And speaking for all the singers and musicians, the dancers and comedians, speaking for all the members of the Grand Ole Opry, I'd like to wish each and every one of you a very merry, happy, and holy Christmas. Good night from the Grand Ole Opry, and Merry Christmas, everybody. Tonight, there's a special feeling of peace wherever families and friends gather together. The hurried weeks of Christmas shopping are over, the presents are wrapped and tied, artfully stacked under the tree. Children sleep restlessly, but they're dreaming extra sweet dreams. You can read thoughts of loved ones in faraway places in the eyes of the one who sits beside you. Perhaps a gentle fall of snow whispers against your window panes, and high in the velvety deep blue sky, again a bright star signals great news to the world. A savior is born. There will be peace on earth, goodwill to men. Tonight the makers of new king-size Cavalier cigarettes join you in thoughts of loved ones, of peace, goodwill, and of abundant, productive life ahead for you and yours. Merry Christmas, friends. Good night. This program was brought to you by WSM, affiliated with the National Broadcasting Company. This is Monitor, the new NBC radio service. WSM, the National Life and Accident Insurance Company, Nashville, Tennessee. Subscribe to Friends Talking Nerdy on iTunes, the Google Play Music Store, as well as Spotify. Remember to support Friends Talking Nerdy on Patreon. Goodbye, darling.